Hey guys, it's Dave coming to you from the Hobo Dojo. And um, first off, I just want to start off by saying I didn't do any of those things I said I was going to do. I was going to have some tracks put up and uh, they're uploaded, but they're not, um, they're not made public yet. And I didn't do those little introductory videos that I was going to do out from when I was out in the desert. I did go to the desert and I am back from the desert and it just wasn't um, the kind of place where I felt I, I could do those things. I was just, I was too busy doing other things. Um, let me explain what that is. It's the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. The RTR is what it's called. And it's in Quartzsite, Arizona. And it is it was founded and is run by a guy named Bob Wells, who is sort of the guru of the motorized nomadic movement. And I've started hanging around with these people. Let's see, I'm going to see if I can center myself in here a little bit better. Um, I've been hanging around with these people for a couple of years off and on, and I'm just oddly fascinated by what they're doing, this sort of withdrawing from regular um, consumerist workaday society. And I, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated in both the upside and the downside of it, because certainly I see the downside to it as well as the upside. I, I see a lot of... Um, I'm watching people over time, like an anthropologist would, people who come into it very, very excited for the freedom, and then I'm watching them deal with issues like isolation and loneliness and um, um, a, a lack of meaning, a lack of sort of purpose, I would say. Um, so there's ups and downs to this thing, and I'm just kind of uh, generally uh, interested in it. So I go out there to camp with them. Um, and this time was very strange because I couldn't get together with my normal guy. I, I go hang out with a guy named Eugene. I don't know Eugene's last name because he doesn't tell anybody his last name. I asked him, as I was putting him in my phone, and he gave me the name Naval Gazer as his last name. So <laughs> he's a kind of secretive in that way. I'm not exactly sure what he might be running from, but he's my bro out there. I, you know, I, I'm very fond of him, and we play guitars together, and when I go out there, generally I just camp by him, and my plans for the, for the week consist of getting up in the morning, having coffee with Eugene, and discussing what mischief we got into the night before, and then basically I follow him around all day, and, um, <laughs> and we always end up in, in camp uh, fires and song circles and all kinds of different things and he's a good organizer and he's a good promoter so he always gets some little events going where um the two of us can can ply our musical skills and meet people and um just have fun you know but eugene has a job right now because everybody runs out of money and so he has a job and he's actually working in quartzite so he could come out from time to time, but then he had to go back and, and go to work. And um, the idea that he could come out there every night and party with us, uh, it sounded like something he thought he could do. But, you know, you're tired after working all day. So I was sort of disconnected from my spirit animal. And, um, and then it rained. And it rained a lot. Um, it rained really heavy for a couple of days. And where I was parked, I parked in the side... Uh, Quartzsite, the, the area there, we camp out on, on uh, Bureau of Land Management land. And the ground is covered with this um, gravel sort of stuff. The, the quartz site is what it's called, the place. And it's, it's all full of rocks. And they are spread out all over the ground. Now, right beneath those things is nice, soft soil. Um, but they, generally, the ground is covered. As, it's almost like you're on a, a gravel... Uh, thing, but they're, but they're they're flat. So what happens is the these rocks kind of settle, so they're sort of flat sided up, and and so you have a, a kind of a loose parking lot type structure, um, and it can rain, and you don't really notice it until you get out on the part that's not covered with the rocks, and you realize how much um, uh, water has sunk into the ground and how perilous it is <laughs> to catch your tires. Well, I had found a spot when I got there to uh, to camp. And somebody had, had raked all of the rocks off and left this nice, soft, sandy kind of spot. And I thought, that's my spot. That's where I'm going to put my kitchen and all my chairs and my guitar on a stand. And all that'll be my home. will be wonderful for a week. And I did that, not really considering that 
I was going to end up uh, with my living room being a complete mud puddle, which is what happened to me. It was really, really squishy soft after a couple of days. One full day, I, I spent out away from that, on my own camp. And in the min meantime, my I, I was out helping people who were stuck, and I was scouting around, and I was just trying to do kind of volunteerish sorts of things. I was soaked to the skin all day. I was having a hell of a good time um, in the rain. And by the time I got back to where the where the traveling uh, where my little traveling pod was, my little safari van, I uh, had all my stuff was out well most of it was jammed back in this that i didn't that i didn't want to get wet but things like your coleman stove you can leave those out that doesn't matter if they get wet my my you know kitchen stuff doesn't matter if it gets wet all the stuff gets wet anyway so i came back and found out that i was really in the squish zone and my uh and my van had settled into the ground somewhat so i couldn't really move the van for several for a couple of days after that and then it was really hard to get it out after the sun did come up I had to be really, really super careful to get it out. And I dug big grooves. I didn't get stuck, but um, in general, it wasn't the it, the the week that I was out there wasn't conducive to doing things like walking around with a selfie, sticking, explaining the uh, the song that I'm posting. Uh, it just didn't happen. That was my intention, but it didn't happen. Also, I only got one of my uh, one of my videos up that was planned to be done while I was uh, out there, that would be part seven and eight of my feminism series. I only got part seven up. Some of you watched it. I, I, like, I really was pleased that, that you guys get what I'm talking about there. And I don't expect these videos to do huge business. You know, there I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because I really think we need to, we really need to get a good, solid, informed, well-reasoned look at what feminism is really doing to us. Um, it's doing quite the opposite of liberating women, in my view. Um, so I didn't get part eight up because Jason's wife has been, well, she's been right on the very brink of giving birth. And I'm not going to tell you if that happened. It may have happened last night. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let Jason tell you that. Um, let's just say that, that, um, that there is uh, no reason to be concerned anymore other than for Jason's uh, ability to have any time to make videos. It's going to get really, really difficult to do. Um, and he just never got around to, in this past week, he was so busy with that, he never got around to getting, he was trying to make his own videos and keep the channel going while I'm out there, you know, doing my anthropological studies of, uh, of wheeled nomads. Um, and you know, he made a couple of videos during that period of time, and they did pretty well, and you guys liked them, and we consulted over the phone about what they were going to be and things like that. But he's, you know, holding down a full-time job and getting ready to be a daddy. Lots and lots of stuff for him to do. Um, and so it's going to get very difficult for us to make videos in com the coming months. We're going to keep doing it, and I think I might have to carry a little extra weight. So the way I'm going to be doing it is I'm going to be uh, digging into the bigger topics that I wanted to dig into. I'm going to be digging into talking about uh, depression, um, uh, addiction, things that I know about from firsthand experience. I'm also going to talk about the greater issues of that we as conservatives think about and also that, that people um, as liberals think about. What are the values? So, I, you know, as you can tell probably from my, from my videos, I try to dig into that a little bit more than just rising up to talk about the latest thing that everybody's talking about, um, which is perfectly valid thing to do. Uh, you know, and I, I come home from these trips and, you know, I've got the, you know, what am I supposed to talk about? Am I supposed to quickly make a video about the way that the Trump deal is being rejected by the Democrats? We all know what's going on there. It's completely pol politicized. There's nothing really to say about that. The man is trying to do what he promised to do, what his constituency expects him to do, which and which is actually a proper role of an American president. He's trying to defend the border, not against not for any nefarious reasons it's the border for god's sake and that's one of the few things a president is, is tasked with doing is protecting the homeland and he's being as reasonable as he could possibly be i think um 
but we know what's what's happening here it's all just flat out war it's flat out war and people you know i got home and people were telling me do a thing on the covington and I, what's covington i had no idea what covington was i'm not listening to the news when i'm out in the desert so I look it up and it's and I'm thinking, OK, it, you know, it started out being all oh, these horrible boys with the red hats, you know, taunting everybody. And then, oh, and then everybody jumps on and tells them, you know, horror, you know, incites violence against these boys, talks about. And so apparently some of these were uh, people who were criticizing these boys were um, never Trump or conservatives who were. You know, they their Trump derangement sy <laughs> syndrome is is rivals that of the Trump deranged on the left. And I know a few of these guys very well, and they're well-intended guys. Um, I'm sure that's why Michael Medved was thrown off the air in um, in California and replaced by um, what's that guy's name, Sebastian Gorka. Um, I got no problem with Sebastian Gorka, but he's clearly Trump world. He's all Trump all the time. And I think this is dangerous. I think it's, it's you know, Michael Medved was the only guy on that station who was willing to criticize Donald Trump, uh, who wasn't a, a never Trumper, but he supported the president as best he could, given his own values. I don't want to belong to, I don't want to, sew myself into a conservative bubble where I never hear the opinions of anybody else. So I look at this Covington thing and, and I see, okay, originally it was thought that these boys were there and they were taunting people and being racist, whatever. Uh, you know, you got to remember the people on the left, they don't get anything outside their bubble. And all they think is, okay, Trump is racist because they've been told from the hive mind, by the hive mind, that he's racist. And the red hats is a symbol of racism. And so to wear a red hat at a place where there's a black, uh, a bunch of black guys meeting nearby and a bunch of Indian guys meeting nearby. Well, you know, from their standpoint, that would seem like these kids are just doing nothing but taunting. So, you know, and then it comes out that, well, actually, it wasn't so much that the, the boys were being peaceful and, and then they were approached first. They were taunted first. And then they started doing like Indian rain dance back to it and you know, I don't think there's any really any good guys in this, and I don't think there's anybody who's particularly a bad guy in this, given the fact that the country is fucking insane right now. I mean, is everybody just afraid to, you know, pull that IV feed of uh, of you know red meat juice out of their arms to to go a couple of days without being angry at something? Is that pe people are thinking that their 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 heart will stop beating or something like that? Um, it's getting really, really difficult to be a human being in this, in this society. I ran into it out at the desert. You know how I feel about, uh, about feminism. I think feminism is, is just in a super nutshell. It's basically a, a, an attempt to get women to emulate all the least attractive behaviors of men. Because all the most attractive behaviors of men are really highly moderate, are, are, are highly, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're very much um, brought to the fore. They exist in all humans, but the, the qualities of gentle, firm, strong masculinity, these are, these are the, the parts of us that come out in response to women, in response to wise, calm women who understand the dangers of male behavior and... Um, and to understand the great resource that a good man is. And so um, feminism wants to ignore all that stuff. Stop interacting with men. Stop being that wise woman who brings out the best in a man. They want nothing to do with any of that stuff anymore because they decided that men are the bad guys. And so what? They, and they themselves want to compete with men to do all the asshole roles, to be all the you know do all that dick move stuff that men do do if they're not properly. Uh, if their behavior isn't properly moderated by good, thoughtful women. We do turn into kind of, you know, jerk-offs fairly easily because we're competitive, we're aggressive. It's all the stuff that used to uh, find its outlet in running off over the hill to war with a neighboring tribe or to go surround some big animal and stab it with sticks until we kill it. You know, the 
the best part of of our days in when we were primitives had to do with uh, just having finished up an act of aggression that we came out alive after and so yes we have these aggressive tendencies but women need to n women need to be on board with us you know and uh, properly draw us forward with flirtation with making eyes at us, with touching us on the arm when they're talking to us, so that we go, okay, I'm being accepted here. I'm being accepted. What now? What What does she want from me? And then they tell you. A wise woman will tell you in all in all sorts of different ways what is expected of you. That you're expected to to be the protector. You're expected to be the strong person, the guy that that goes out to the car automatically and brings the groceries in without having been asked. You know what I mean? That you, because you're proud to uh, to contribute the fact that you have you are bigger, taller, and stronger. Um, but, we, but these feminists are trying to unwind the thing that enabled us to make society from the from the raw materials of what women basically are and what men basically are, and that this this way that they could work together to bring out the best in both of them and. Uh, is genius. The people who who started getting rid of polygamy and and put in its place this this great societal um, um, support of monogamy. These people were geniuses. These were they were geniuses. They found us. They found the amazing formula so that every man could have. A little kingdom in his own the old thing a man's home is his castle that's not just a joke that's not just kind of some kind of cutesy thing that's real that's real that uh, that men need to feel important and if a man can feel important in the world that consists of him his wife and three or four kids and their neighbors and their extended family if he can be if he can be drawn to the top of that through his through his solidity through his competence through his generosity through his personal courage and uh, willingness to sacrifice his own needs for the needs of his group, then we've got a society. And they're trying to unwind the society. And I'm seeing this happening to this larger group that I've been studying uh, these these digit, not digital nomads, those are the ones that, that work jobs, uh, these um, sort of the rubber tramps, as uh, Bob Wells calls them. Uh, but the the wheeled uh, contingent of people who are out there living full times in motorhomes and vans and converted school buses and things, and they gather in places like the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. That's their main meeting each year, and it's being ruined by these feminist bullies. I got up the other day uh, early, and I was parked in a, in a place and it had been very very cold the night before, and I walked to a communal campfire where there was always uh, a fire going early in the morning. I walked over there with my coffee and I saw a friend of mine, a guy named Mike, uh, who drives a converted school bus. We're good friends. We camp together a lot. And he was there and there were two women that were sleeping on the ground. Now, I knew both of these women from previous times. I'd had conversations with both of them. I never had any problem with either one of them. For some reason, they were sleeping on the ground. They had covers on them. They had put a pad out. They were sleeping next to the fire. So I come up, we so I go over there and Mike and I are kidding back and forth and stuff. It's it's morning. People get together and over their morning coffee they they socialize. I mean it's th this is the norm, not some kind of weird thing. But one of the so I'm I'm just you know hanging out, and one of the women looked up at me and I looked at her, and so I would I apparently my eyes caught her just about the same time hers caught mine, and I didn't like look away like oh my god i can't be caught looking good i just looked at her for about this long and she said what are you staring at and i said i'm not staring at anything i'm looking at you i'm i'm give oh, i'm establishing eye contact is that something i have to be careful of now and she she's and and in fact then the other girl started attacking me like 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 what like i committed some sort of act of aggression like it was some sort of me too moment yeah a guy looked at me for five seconds and didn't turn away now the the woman who um who first got aggressive with me it happens that she's african-american so she's running two different sorts of victim things out there there's very few african-americans out there so she's an african-american feminist defensive type so she's probably getting her yayas out by um 
by shaming any white guy she possibly can for any behavior that in any sort of possible way could be seen as some sort of uh, overture toward her or whatever. And, you know, I, I, Mike and I just said, fuck this, and we walked away from the fire. So, we, you know, so these two people, by by squatting there, had taken over the communal fire, and it, nobody else went by the fire, you know? And, and later, I, you know... I, it was so weird because later I'm, I was performing and I was right in the middle of a song and everybody was paying attention to me and stuff. And I could see that woman, that one that had given me the shit. I don't know what her name is. I could see her just looking at me going, and I could tell her, the wheels were turning. She's going, is this the guy I yelled at that morning? I can't tell. Is this the guy I yelled at? Um, and, you know, because I was in a moment where every all the attention was on me and everybody was loving me up. Um, that was one of, of the two incidents I had. The other one was I was hanging out with a friend of mine, Andre, and we were walking back and forth. And Andre's a Canadian. And he's uh, he's very anti-big business. He's very anti... I, I don't really... It's hard to get a fix on this guy because he's one of these guys that just... He's anti-things that you didn't expect to be anti. But I, I, I get a kick out of him. We always have a good time talking. So he starts explaining to me how America is such a shitty place. And I'm saying things like, okay, Andre, calm down a little bit. You live in Canada, and here you are all the way down in America. If it's such a shitty place, why are we? Why are you here? You know, uh, you know, it is, are, it, and no, it's really just a shitty-ass thing, and it's, it's an oligarchy and all these things, right? So I say, okay, you're calling it a shitty-ass country. Uh, is it, you know, look, look at all these people around you. There's thousands of people around you. Are we all shitty ass people? And no, no, of course not. Well, what are, what is the country? Are you, what are you talking about? The government, right? So then he starts talking about the government. Just then this woman comes up and she goes, and she, and she goes, is he bothering you to Andre? And I, we weren't shouting. Neither one of us had raised, we're very good friends. Neither one of us had raised our voices in any way, but she heard the conversation beginning that went started to go to government she heard one guy attack the government and so the other the guy that wasn't attacking the government was me now that means i must be a trump uh bad guy so she runs up and she starts interfering with our conversation telling us how you know uh you know that i have no right to talk you know to to raise my voice i said i, I didn't raise my voice you're the only one here who's raised her voice the two of us uh, andre did you, did you feel i was raising my no I, you know he he didn't you know, and she didn't, but she didn't care. She then she went into a diatribe of telling me what a horrible person Donald Trump was, as if I had mentioned his name, which I had not. As if Andre had mentioned his name, which he had not. We had not talked about Donald Trump; it hadn't come up. So, but the fact that a woman thinking would think that it's somehow in uh, a sign of her personal power to come up to two strangers. And interfere with a conversation that it, in which she has not been it, into which she has not been invited, and start scolding one of them for a for a perceived view, um, and she thought that was just absolutely fine. See, and nobody would come up to her and say, "Get your ass out of here, you skank! What the hell are you doing here? These are human beings. Why do you think that you can come over and bully these people?" So that was the second of two bullying incidents that I had. The third was I ran into a good friend of mine. He's a he's a retired fire chief, and he told me about that these uh, these there are these women, a group of feminists, who camp and they've moved sort of into Eugene's area. So when Eugene is there full time, they camp right around him. It's like to build a wall of feminism around him, and none of them are sleeping with him. So I don't know what he's really getting out of it, other than the fact that they're always oh Eugene, you're so wonderful. But it's based on the fact that they're all mad at me, and they've discovered that I uh, that I'm a conservative and that I have that I speak out against feminism, and they're super feminists. And I had a little thing with one of them before that she knew that uh, a, a while back when I first was introduced to these people, and they so I I find out from this uh, he goes by the name Chief, he's a fire he's a retired fire chief, he says you know that that those women. They're telling all these tales about you, and he 
and and he talked about those things. Apparently, they they had seen my my video, which is called He Too, and um, all it is is an acknowledgement that women have an effect on men that's sometimes negative, and that women who are going into a bar and all dolled up and they're letting guys buy them drinks all night and then they leave everybody in the lurch, well, they've got some explaining to do themselves. And that that is not legitimate. It, it, it's not legitimate that women uh, are able to friend zone guys and have guys move them 10 times and fix their cars and all that stuff. And then they dump that guy like a hot potato. And uh, in, in that video, I started it and I ended it by saying, in no, under no circumstances is it okay for a guy to uh, force his attentions on a woman. But neither is it okay for women to intentionally hurt men and act as if men have no feelings. So that's what that video was. You're welcome to look at it. At its, you can find it on our channel. Um, but apparently she'd read that and she was telling everybody else that I was pro-rape, basically. So now, here's, so now I have three different pods of women out there uh, <laughs> you know who are who have decided that they're going to uh d destroy my social life uh and there they will have they'll have no negative impact from that if any guy did that if any guy went around and and said well i'm mad at who well, like say i'm mad at andre for putting my country down and i went around and told stories about him behind his back I mean, if, everybody would throw me out of the tribe if that came out, regardless of what I'd said was, was accurate. Uh, it, but women feel free to do that. They feel free to do this bullying behavior. And it is some nasty shit. I'm going to do a video on, on the bully women. Anyway, didn't want to get off on there, but just all in all, it was a very odd gathering. So... Um, what else do I want to talk to you guys, to you guys about? I'm I'm just letting myself ramble. I know that some of you, you know, you don't have time to listen to this. So, a side of it, it's fine. I just didn't want to write stuff down. I I just was wanted to put something on the channel because it's going to be a couple of days before we can get anything official up. Um, but we're living in, in this society right now where everything's upside down. Everything's upside down. That that if kids show up somewhere wearing uh, a symbol of the current president of the United States platform. Uh, uh, you know, that's not a symbol of Donald Trump. It's a symbol of make America great again. I mean, if you if, if you were saying, I'm going to, I, I am part of one of the people who will make America great again, and I'm perfectly willing to work with Donald Trump, who happens to be the elected, the duly elected president of our country, who is our president now, if you show up somewhere with a red hat on, um, you're liable to get slugged. Now, I, I, looking back on it, I think these kids did provoke. And um, there was no real reason to be wearing MAGA hats. They were there supposedly for the March uh, for the march for Life, and um, which is a legitimate thing, that, which has to do with saving human lives. And to for them to then, you know, for them to then pull, do the hat trick... I don't think that's legitimate. If those kids were my kids, I would have said that's what, that was a dick move. You know, uh, there was important business being done by the by the pro life movement, and now here you are, and you're gonna get in the face of some other guys. So I completely get that. If you show it, if you're wearing a red hat, you are waving a red flag. Is it legitimate that you that people should be responding to it in that way? No, it's not. But that's the reality right now. And so I, I walk around on eggshells almost everywhere I go just so that I don't have anything to do with a scene happening. Even if I had nothing to do with starting the scene, I have to be super, super outgoing and nice and kind to everybody just because somebody may be behind my back has found out that I'm a conservative and now they're going to destroy my thing. So I've got to be uh, on the up and up and the per my perfect behavior at all times. It, it, it's, com it's complete um, psychological oppression. And look, I, t I take it on myself, right? Because, and I'm a big boy, so I'm not trying to portray a victim here. 
But there are a lot of other people who are going through this too, who do not have a platform like I have where they can go out and, and talk to 10,000 people and tell and get their ideas out there and people can share their ideas and stuff like that. And, then, and they have a certain uh, a number of people who are supporters. A lot of you guys don't have any sort of support like that at all. And you got to walk around, you know, holding your head down and hiding from these freaking bullies, you know, these these girls and uh, and you know the you know the collegiate soy boys who are really just trying to get in the pants of those girls. All these these little bully people are it's just tremendously tedious. And I don't know how we got to a place where adults are hiding and and cowering so they don't get messed up by thoughtless girls for the most part um, for people who don't know the first thing about human nature or government you know <laughs> you listen to that I, I hate to beat up on her I, I, like i don't ever po po post any things where where the, there's the bug-eyed stare from i'm pretty bug-eyed myself the bug-eyed stare of ocasio cortez or occasional cortex like i like to call her but um so I, and i am always against mocking people for immutable characteristics i don't call i don't rip on people because they're they're uh, ugly you know i think it's it's completely horrendous when jimmy kimmel goes on and makes fun of ted cruz's face and i would think the same thing if if ted cruz was making fun of uh, Jimmy Kimmel's face. I think it was un, uh, unbecoming of Donald Trump, and I cringe, I cringe, and it kept me from becoming a Trump guy for a very long time because he would do that sort of thing. I think it's stupid. It's beneath us um, to rag on somebody's immutable characteristics. Having said that, this is an elected official now, this Ocasio Cortex, and occasional Cortex, and she. She knows so little about human nature. It's frightening. She knows so knows nothing at all about virtually anything. And, and, and people are responding to her as if she's a great threat to society. Well, she's not even out of her 20s, is she? Has she turned 30? Um, she's basically a girl right out of college who's never been outside the bubble before. Uh, that, that she got elected is pretty strange. Uh, but it's not the end of the Republic. And I think that we should stop giving her all this attention. Uh, we should st stop giving the, uh, e e anybody that, that comes off like a jerk so much attention. We're, we're, we're just giving, we're feeding the flames. Now, if somebody wants to go out there, it's like the trolls on my, uh, my videos, uh, you know, I, I delete them. It's like, I, I feel like, God, I got to spend hours on each of these things every night when I get home. Um, just to get rid of the people who are saying stuff that I don't want said on on the thread of one of my uh, one of my videos, I want that to be a safe place for us to hang out. I mean, I, I hate to use the term "safe place," you know, because I know we're all big kids and it's okay if somebody rips on me or just not gonna. No one's gonna go. Oh my God, I need to go find a teddy bear and and comfort myself. It's it's not a big deal, but. These people, that's a full-time job for them. You, you follow them back to their, their thing. They don't have any content. They don't have any uh, subscribers. They're not a YouTube channel. They're just a troll. They just have a YouTube account, and they go on there and think, what can I do? What can I do? Who can I piss off? And a lot of them, as this has to be remembered, and it's something to remind your liberal friends of when they tell you about the nasty things they heard said uh, uh, on the on the behalf of Donald Trump is that I first learned about this from Milo is that these are mostly kids and sometimes when they go on a thread they will go on the thread and they'll use this sort of reverse psychology thing where uh, and people do it on my threads they come on there and they say something really radical against leftists like like that we should be or, or against people coming across the border. We should be uh, shooting them on sight, you know, uh, summary execution for anybody crossing the border. And, you, border. and you follow these people back to their thread, and if there's anything posted there, it's left-wing stuff. These aren't us. They're, they're them posing as us and giving it the worst possible uh, 
optics that they that they can think of and it's underhanded it's dishonest and we're stuck with it because if we're going to have some sort of this forum for us connecting with one another um by the millions those people are going to be there and they're going to be trying to make us look bad and uh, all that we can do if you've got a channel and you're and you're doing the same kind of thing i am all we can do is just delete them and, and if it's somebody like that i take a minute i go back there and i block them i go to their page and i block them and if it's something that's just an argument against me but somebody it's and, and even if it's a little bit rude i leave it up there because it's fair for people to dis to to disagree with me um but it's not fair for people to come on and and do this trolley thing um i'm not doing that i don't think i don't go to other people's channels and and leave comments it, i'm putting a thing out there i'm using the i'm using the forum so people can make the argument that if i'm going to use the forum that i have to play by the rules of the forum but what are the rules of the forum the rules of the forum aren't that that you can allow that everybody that you owe the that thread as a forum to everybody who didn't make the video we don't do that and, and I'm, i don't consider that censorship if i say um no i mean if you want to come scream at me because i s dare to say something about tattoos that you don't like and you want to scream at me and call me a child molester um i don't need to have that i don't need to offer you that space now if you want to make some sort of argument great make the argument that's fine other people will take it up with you and there will be a sub thread and that's all fine and good so this this free speech thing is very very perilous in this particular age um one thing that's good about that, that's good about youtube is that people don't immediately get notified if somebody responds to their comment unless they've already subbed to my channel and hit notifications if I respond to a comment of theirs, they don't immediately hear it wherever they have, pops up on their phone. Oh my God, that guy dared to come back after I called him a douche nozzle. I'm going to call him, you know, something much worse. And they go back and then they, we're, we're, and we're going back and forth and they're calling me something, I'm calling them something. That happens on Facebook, right? Ding! You know, oh, that person, you know, they, uh, they responded to your comment. Facebook tells you right about it. You know, they, they, oh no, we, we think the divide is a terrible thing. We, th we wish people would stop arguing. That's why we designed, designed a forum, uh, to, that is, psychologists could not de devise something that is more conducive to the sort of lowest common denominator arguments that you do see on Facebook. Um, and, YouTube at least flies above that level by not somehow you know everybody that comments and gets responded to gets notified. It doesn't if they, unless they're subscribed and not and hit notifications. I believe they don't get that. I'm still re relatively new to YouTube, but I will say this: because I have, and Jason has, because we have a uh, a conservative channel. There is never anything showing up when we are on there as Blue Collar Logic, when either Jason or myself is on there as Blue Collar Logic. There is never anything, uh, any political thing that is about the same topic, but coming from another standpoint. YouTube gives us only what, what, um, it, what will confirm our biases. And so I don't see any of that stuff. It seems to me when I'm on YouTube that everybody in the world's a conservative. I know that's not true. I know it's not true intellectually but what i see is only other conservatives so i'm 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 left to agree or disagree with people on various ways of being a conservative or being a right winger or whatever it is that we are um so <laughs> so youtube is you know they're not being really on the up and up either when they say that they're that they're doing all they can to get peace back into the dialogue nonsense they're they're, and they're doing exactly the same thing to all the people who go on who who frequent uh uh the young turks or one of the other um things that's heavily left-wing channels they just get more more left-wing stuff right and they don't hear and then some somehow they stumble on something like one of something that you or i would say and their heads explode 
as ours probably would if we if I was privy to what they're doing. Like um, I'm, I'm a, a tattoo thing. I don't know if this this had happened when I talked to you guys about it before. I don't think it had, but a woman called uh, oh Treacle Treacle Tats has a channel. She discovered my uh, my advice against girls getting tats, and of course it made her tremendously filled with anxiety that somebody might. Uh, make a decision that 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 does not duplicate the decision she made. She's of course covered with tattoos, and um, she has a channel. And it's not just she's not just a troll. She's a person with a channel. She's got forty thousand subscribers or something like that. So she's got an audience. And she just thought it was so far beyond the pall or beyond the pale that I would deem to to advise girls about what to do with their bodies. So I looked at her channel for a minute and I discovered two things. One, that she had an advice uh, an advice video about not uh, putting pop culture things on you for exactly the same reasons that I said, because that will pass. That will pass, your interest in that will pass. That will fall out of style. It's, that's a faddish image. So she, it's apparently it's fine for her to give exactly the same advice that I gave, but because she's covered with tats and I'm not, uh, then I must be driven, uh, uh, you know, off the planet. And she made not one but two videos about my videos. So it, you know, my face is right on the, and I just said I'm not going in there. I don't need that to take my. Uh, yeah, I was out in the desert when I discovered this, and I, I think, and I, I said I'm not going in there. I don't need to know what she's saying about me, but. I mean, someone could take my video and put it into their over there and turn it into content. Oh, here's somebody. He's got 500,000 views on this thing. He's got 100,000, 120,000 on the other one. I'm going to use those, and then I will mention his name, and I will, you know, trash him, and maybe that will give me some more views, me being treacle tats. So... I mean, it's it's a very it's a very odd thing to be in to be to to be. I'm I'm just trying to to put some of my ideas out there, find and locate the people with whom I agree and form some sort of community where we can exchange ideas and help each other keep our uh, New Year's resolutions and and uh, become friends in whatever way, um, and have fun doing it. Um, and it's some kind of psychological warfare going on on out there. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not bailing, <laughs> but but it's a little bit difficult sometimes to uh, to uh, to keep going forward and saying that this is uh, that now. What do I do here? So um, you won't see me doing very many of these things where I rush on and do a and do a video about what the outrage of the day happens to be. Uh, that's more current events. And Jason enjoys doing that more than I do. So when he has time to do those sorts of things, I'm going to leave that to him. He always brings a thoughtful slant to all these things. He always ties it into uh, to some more elevated thinking and to the basic values that are that are being uh, discussed. So anyway, I've talked way way too long. I could talk for an hour, but I'm not. I'm not Stefan Molyneux. I can't be interesting for an hour. Anyway, I felt I should put something up. Everything's good here. Everything's good with, with our channel. I thank you all for, very much, uh, those of you who are um, share this community with us. And uh, it's all good. It's a joyous day, at least I think. I can't, I'm not making any announcements, but it could be a joyous day well, for Blue Calder Logic if there's a tiny little cub now uh, involved. But uh, you're going to have to wait and hear the, about that from, from the man himself. So uh, have a good day. I'm going to go get some stuff done. Thanks for watching.